In 2011, a new hacking group emerged on the internet, calling themselves Lultsec. They claimed to hack for the lulz, or laughs, and not for any political or ideological agenda. They launched a series of cyber attacks that shocked the world, exposing the vulnerabilities of some of the most powerful and influential organizations. They also sparked a global movement of hacktivists, who joined forces to challenge the status quo. But who were Lultsec, and what motivated them to hack? And how did they manage to evade capture for so long, until one of them betrayed the others? This is the story of Lultsec, the hackers who made history. Chapter 1. The Beginning Lultsec was born in May 2011, in the private chat rooms of Anonymous, a decentralized collective of hackers and activists. Anonymous had gained fame for their attacks on Scientology, MasterCard, and PayPal, among others, in support of various causes, such as free speech, human rights, and anti-censorship. Lultsec was a splinter group, formed by a handful of hackers who wanted to have more fun and cause more chaos. They chose their name as a combination of lols, a slang term for laughter and security, which is what they like to compromise. Their first target was Fox.com, where they hacked into the database and leaked the names and profiles of 73,000 X Factor contestants. They also posted a message on the site, mocking Fox for their negative coverage of a rapper named Common. They said they didn't like Fox very much, and invited them to kiss their handcrafted crescent fresh asses. Their next target was PBS, the public broadcasting service, where they planted a fake news story claiming that the dead rappers Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls were alive and living in New Zealand. They also leaked thousands of passwords and emails from PBS employees and affiliates. They said they did this in retaliation for a documentary that criticized WikiLeaks. The whistleblowing website that Anonymous supported, Lulsec announced their attacks on Twitter, where they quickly gained a large following. They used a cartoon logo of a man in a top hat and monocle, holding a glass of wine and a pipe, with a smiley face, and the words LOL SECURITY. They also adopted a slogan, laughing at your security since 2011. They taunted their victims, bragged about their exploits, and challenged anyone to stop them. They also interacted with their fans, asking them to vote for their next target, or to join them in prank calls and denial of service attacks. They called themselves the Latter-day Pirates and the Gods of the Internet. Chapter 2. The Rampage Lulzak's rampage continued for 50 days, during which they hacked into dozens of websites and systems, belonging to various sectors such as gaming, media, government, and security. Some of their most notable attacks were Sony where they breached the PlayStation Network and stole the personal data of 24.6 million customers, including names, addresses, passwords, and credit card numbers. They also hacked into Sony Pictures, Sony Music, and Sony BMG, and leaked more data and files. They said they did this to expose Sony's poor security and to avenge the lawsuit against George Hotz, a hacker who had jailbroken the PlayStation. the CIA, where they took down the website of the Central Intelligence Agency, using a denial-of-service attack which floods a server with fake requests until it crashes. They said they did this for the lulz, and to show that even the most secretive and powerful agency was not safe from them. The U.S. Senate, where they hacked into the website of the upper chamber of the U.S. Congress, and defaced it with their logo and a message, saying this is a small, just for kicks release of some internal data from Senate.gov. Is this an act of war, gentlemen? Problem? They also leaked some files and passwords from the Senate servers. They said they did this to demonstrate the inefficiency and corruption of the U.S. government. Lultzak also attacked other organizations, such as Nintendo, Bethesda, Minecraft, EVE Online, The Escapist, Finfisher, Infraguard, Unvalence, Prawn.com, The Sun, the Times, and many more. They leaked data, defaced websites, and disrupted services, causing millions of dollars in damages and losses. 
They also exposed the personal information of thousands of people, putting them at risk of identity theft and fraud. They said they did this to entertain themselves and their audience, and to draw attention to the insecurity of the internet. Chapter 3. The End Lulsac's reign of terror came to an end in June 2011, when they announced their retirement. After 50 days of hacking, they released a final statement, saying that they had achieved their mission and that they were not afraid of being caught. They also released a large archive of data, containing more than a million accounts and passwords from various sources. They said they hoped that their actions would inspire others to continue the fight for freedom and lulls. They signed off with their signature phrase, We are lulls security, and this is our final release, as today marks something meaningful to us. Fifty days ago, we set sail with our humble ship on an uneasy and brutal ocean, the internet, the hate machine, the love machine, the machine powered by many machines. We are all part of it, helping it grow and helping it grow on us. For the past 50 days, we've been disrupting and exposing corporations, governments, often the general population itself, and quite possibly everything in between, just because we could, all to selflessly entertain others, vanity, fame, recognition. All of these things are shadowed by our desire for that which we all love, the raw, uninterrupted, chaotic thrill of entertainment and anarchy. It's what we all crave, even the seemingly lifeless politicians and emotionless, middle-aged self-titled failures. You are not failures. You have not blown away. You can get what you want and you are worth having it. Believe in yourself. While we are responsible for everything that the Lulz boat is, we are not tied to this identity permanently. Behind this jolly visage of rainbows and top hats, we are people. People with a preference for music, a preference for food. We have varying taste in clothes and television. We are just like you. Even Hitler and Osama bin Laden had these unique variations in style. And isn't that interesting to know? The mediocre painter turned supervillain like cats more than we did. Again, behind the mask, behind the insanity and mayhem, we truly believe in the anti-sec movement. We believe in it so strongly that we brought it back, much to the dismay of those looking for more anarchic lulls. We hope, wish, even beg, that the movement manifests itself into a revolution that can continue on without us. The support we've gathered for it in such a short space of time is truly overwhelming, and not to mention humbling. Please don't stop. Together, united, we can stomp down our common oppressors and imbue ourselves with the power and freedom we deserve. So with those last thoughts, it's time to say bon voyage. Our planned 50-day cruise has expired, and we must now sail into the distance, leaving behind, we hope, inspiration, fear, denial, happiness, approval, disapproval, mockery, embarrassment, thoughtfulness, jealousy, hate, even love. If anything, we hope we had a microscopic impact on someone, somewhere, anywhere. Thank you for sailing with us. The breeze is fresh and the sun is setting. So now we head for the horizon. Let it flow. Lulz Security. Our crew of six wishes you a happy 2011. And a shout out to all of our Battlefleet members and supporters across the globe. However, Lulzek's farewell was not the end of their story. It was soon revealed that one of their leaders, Sabu, had been arrested by the FBI in June 2011 and had agreed to cooperate with them in exchange for leniency. Sabu, whose real name was Hector Xavier Monsegur, 